Hello guys and gals, and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. Uh, today we're going to be looking at another interesting armor, and this is uh, Kay Hagen's Wisdom Mage Plate. Um, it's relatively easy to come by because it's a mage plate, um, but it does have a level requirement of level 51, let's keep that in mind. And because it is a mage plate, of course, it only has a strength requirement of 55, so relatively low. Um, it does have some stiff op opposition with the uh, skin of the Viper Magi, uh, because the skin of the Viper Magi has 30% faster cast with plus one to all skills, and it also has some other interesting effects on it too, like all resistances that this one does not have. Uh, but this one does have some interesting effects as well, and, uh, and I would not sleep on this. If you have one of these sitting in the stash, and you don't have a Viper Magi sitting around, this can be a very good alternative for the time being. Um, it also upgrades very well into an Archon plate, and uh, we'll uh, look at that later. So right off the bat, you see it has 681 defense. Um, it does vary a little bit uh, because it has a variable of 140 to 160% on the ED, which is only a 20% variable, so not bad. Uh, we have uh, plus one to all skills on this, which does not vary. It's always plus one to skills. Uh, we have 20% faster cast, which is static. We have 20% uh, faster hit recovery, which is static, uh, both of which are absolutely amazing for any character who is a caster class. You need faster hit recovery to prevent those faster hit recovery stun locks, and you also need your faster cast to obviously make your skills cast quicker. Um, and uh, it may be the perfect item for you to hit a specific break point. Who knows? Uh, we also have plus 15 to energy, which is very nice because it's going to give you a nice little bump to your energy pool or your mana pool. As you can see, I have 279, and when I put the plate on, I go to 302. Uh, we also have magic damage reduced by 10, which does vary from 6 to 10, uh, but it is very, very useful to uh, cap out uh, damage like charged bolt, uh, hydras, Anything that is low damage, but relatively high volume, damage reduced by uh, flat numbers work very well against. Uh, whereas uh, when you have something that's very high damage, but low volume, um, it doesn't work quite as well. Uh, but it is very, very helpful to protect you versus uh, certain effects. Like, like for instance, Charged Bolt, um, Hydras, uh, I'm trying to think of like uh, off the top of my head, a bunch of really good ones. Uh, basically anything that counts as magic damage, like fire arrows that come from an archer, the magic component is going to get eaten up by this. Um, you know, there, there's all sorts of little things that it helps against. And while I wouldn't necessarily go out of my way to get it, unless I was maybe an energy shield sorceress, um, but uh, it's nice to have. Uh, we also have plus three to mana after each kill, which is very, very effective at restoring your mana. And uh, and this is something that a lot of people don't realize, is that mana after each kill can be extremely effective for caster types, uh, because if you are a caster type, obviously you're not getting any type of mana steal. So to get any kind of mana restoration, you need either mana regeneration or mana after each kill. And plus three to mana after each kill is actually very, very effective uh, to help restore your mana pool. Um, especially if you're in a zone where you're killing monsters, you know, very regularly. And you can stack these with things like Silkweave Boots, which have plus five. So that's five, six, seven, eight. And you can also stack on some other different uh, mana after each kill uh, items to really stack it up even higher. And for something like a Hammered In or a Sorceress, uh, that mana to after each kill can be just absolutely invaluable. Now, um, this particular plate can be upgraded to the next tier, and I would like to go ahead and do that. So uh, we also have the ethereal version, though, but let's go over that real quick just in case. So we've got 1,021 defense on this, uh, 45 strength, and the same level 51 requirement. Now, the bad thing, thing about it being ethereal is that you really don't want to waste a Zod rune in this. So it becomes a Merc item. And the problem with it being a Merc item is that the faster cast is wasted on any of the Mercs that are not Act 3 Mercs. The faster hit recovery is nice for them, though, uh, and the energy is wasted on them as well. So we, we, we've got a lot of effects that don't necessarily help the mercenaries. The mana after each kill doesn't help mercs. The uh, energy doesn't help mercs. The faster cast doesn't help most mercs. And, uh, and overall, just not really a great plate for mercenaries. Now, the upcoming patch has the uh, Act 3 mercenaries getting buffed quite considerably. And this could be a halfway decent plate for an Act 3 merc. If you were leveling up and you found this ethereal plate... You throw that on your Act 3 Merc, no problem. He'd have a good time with it. Um, it's relatively low level, no stat requirements. There wouldn't be any reason why he couldn't utilize it. The defense would help keep him alive, and the faster cast, the faster hit recovery, the plus one of skills, uh, and the magic damage reduced by 10 will all be very beneficial to a Act 3 Mercenary. Now let's go ahead and upgrade this. And to upgrade this, we're going to need um, a Lem and a Co. And I'm sure I have a million Lems and Co's laying around. 
And we're going to get two of them because we're going to upgrade the ethereal version as well. Mm -hmm. And this one actually upgrades quite nicely. And we need two perfect diamonds. All right, so uh, yeah, apparently I got a peasant's crown in my uh, stash here. And an unidentified ring. <laughs> So let's upgrade the uh, non-ethereal version first with our Lamb Arco and our Perfect Diamond. And we're going to go from 681 defense, 55 strength, level 51, to 1,128 defense, 103 strength, and level 70. Uh, a very solid upgrade, even if the level requirement did go up quite a bit. If I had this plate and I didn't have anything better at that particular moment, I could see upgrading this. The defense upgrade is very, very nice. Uh, the, the strength requirement didn't go up very high because, of course, this is an Archon plate. And, uh, and the level requirement did go up quite a bit, but hopefully by then, by the time I have a Lemon Echo and a Perfect Diamond just laying around that I could spam on items, level 70, I'd probably be level 70 by then. Uh, we can also upgrade the Ethereal version as well if you wanted to do this for a Mercenary. And uh, this one will go from 1,021 at defense, 45 strength requirement, level 51, to 1,669 defense, uh, 93 strength, and level 70. Um, all in all, I feel like this particular item is really just made for casters. Uh, the plus three to mana after each kill, along with the magic, the the energy, and the magic damage reduced, as well as the faster cast and the faster hit recovery, all of it really screams to be a caster type. Uh, so like a uh, a hammerdin, a uh, ice sorceress, a fire sorceress, a lightning sorceress, uh, maybe even a uh, a fire druid or a hurricane druid. Um, any of those classes would probably get very nice effects off of this particular plate. Now, is this the best plate that you could possibly put on? Probably not. Um, I feel like the Skin of the Viper Magi wins out over the K. Hagen's Wisdom. However, you might not always have the K. Hagen's Wisdom. If you were leveling up, if it was a fresh ladder, and you were trying to get your hands on a Skin of the Viper Magi, and you came across to K. Hagen's Wisdom, I would probably just use that until I found a Viper Magi. Um, if I was running along and I never found a Viper Magi for some reason, maybe I'm just the most horribly unlucky person in the world, but I found a K. Hagen's Wisdom, it's definitely a very solid plate to put on that would give me the plus one of skills I need, the faster hit recovery I need, the faster casting I need, and would also help out my mana consumption issues, uh, which is certainly very nice. Um, if you wanted to find this particular plate, um, we could uh, take a look over at Silo's Pen and we can see what specifically uh, you could farm for this particular armor. Um, I would assume, though, that if you were looking for this particular armor, or you, you wouldn't be looking for this particular armor, you would probably be looking for like a Skin of the Viper Magi. But let's just do the numbers real quick, and let's see uh, where you could potentially get this armor if you wanted to. All right, so let's go to K. Higgins Wisdom. Uh, we're going to pretend we have 150% magic find. We're going to do bosses. And uh, from this, on non-quest kills, it looks like Andariel in Hell is your best bet. Uh, Mephisto in Hell has a really nice chance as well. Uh, 1 in 948 and 1 in 960. Not bad. And uh, Diablo and Bale in Hell all both have really nice chances. So honestly, all the act bosses in Hell difficulty are very nice chances. Let's check Nightmare, though, just to see uh, what's going on with, like, Nightmare bosses. So it looks like Bale in Nightmare and Diablo in Nightmare can both drop this item, but Diablo's uh, chances are pretty slim there. And uh, let's go to Super Uniques. And all. So the Cow King in Hell, very high chance. Uh, Neelithak in Hell, Radamant in Hell. The Summoner in Hell, the Countess in Hell, uh, and the Cow King in Nightmare has a pretty decent chance as well. Not bad. Uh, but look at that right there. These are interesting right here. So um, these are all relatively low-level Hell monsters that can easily be farmed from a Nightmare character. Uh, Bishywash, Rocket Ishu, Treehead Woodfish, Bone Ash, uh, Cold Crow is in Cave Level 1, and uh, those are all Act 1 monsters that are really easy to get to. Uh, that you could farm relatively quickly and see if you could probably get one of these. Uh, Rock and Issue also has a pretty good chance of dropping 
a Harlequin Crest Shaco as well. So if you were farming Rockinishu, Treehead Woodfish, and Bone Ash over and over again, um, and you could uh, you could also do Bishy Bosh, uh, this would be a really nice little four super unique monster combo to try and get your sorceress geared up. You could uh, you could look for your Harlequin Crest. You could look for a K Hagen's. You could look for a uh, I'm not sure if Viper Magi drops from these guys, but maybe a Viper Magi as well. Um, it's right in the beginning of Hell, so you shouldn't have too much trouble. Uh, usually Act One is like the the entry level. And, uh, and and honestly, this these areas that these are in, Cold Plains, Stonyfield, Darkwood, uh, those are relatively easy zones anyway. So not bad. Anyway, as always, I do appreciate uh, you guys and gals watching my videos, even when we're talking about uh, a very wise plate of armor, such as Kay Hagen's. And uh, as always, keep watching.